In this video, I'll be looking at how you can start a Visual Basic Console app using Visual Studio. When you launch Visual Studio 2022, you'll be presented with something that looks like this. And you can see here it is allowing you to do a number of things under this heading of Get Started. You can clone a repository, you can open a project or solution, you can open a local folder and scroll down and here you can see it says create a new project. Now that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come here, I'm going to double click on it and it'll then present me with this dialog box which says create a new project. Now in this area you will see a list of templates that allow for the creation of projects. Look to the first one, you can see console app is selected. I'm going to come to this scrolling bar here and I'm going to scroll down and you can see I'm going to a number of templates. You can see them moving past. I'll stop here. There's another one here and that's a template. And this template here we'll be looking at in due course in the playlist, but in truth quite a long way off. If I carry on scrolling down, you can see there are many more templates available to me as somebody who wishes to write a program using Visual Studio. Now, the next thing I need to consider is what language do I wish to use when I'm developing my new project? If you come up here, you can see it says all languages. If I click on this arrow, I'm going to get a drop down box and it is listing all the languages that are available for me to use within this Visual Studio integrated development environment. And you can see I can use C Sharp. Come down here, you can see there's Visual Basic. So that's the language I wish to use. So I'm going to click on to Visual Basic. And if you now look here at this area and I scroll down, you can see there's still lots of project templates available to me. Um, and I want to home in on the correct one for writing a console application. Now you can see here at the top, there is console application, but I can tell you that's not the one that I actually want. What I'm now going to do, I'm going to come over to here where it says all platforms. I'm going to drop down the list and here you can see that it's saying, do you wish to have a template you can open in which you can use the Visual Basic language in the Android operating system? Now I don't want that. Now I'm using Windows 11. So if I come down here, you can see that there's Windows. So I'm going to select that and keep your eye on the list of projects below this drop down box. And if I scroll down, there are less projects, but still quite a few projects that I can select. So I will now come over here to select the project type. Click on that and you can see it gives me a number of types of projects that I can find the template for, find the project template for. So if I come back up now, the one I'm interested in is this one here, the console. The other one I'm going to be interested in in this playlist is the desktop. Now what about all of the others? Wow. This initial playlist is going to be for beginners. I'm going to recommend that you concentrate on the console projects and the desktop projects. So I'm going to select console here. And when I do, if you look, if I attempt to scroll now, you can see there's just two projects available to me to allow me to write in Visual Basic in the Windows operating system and produce a console application. Let's look at this one. I could choose that if I so wish, but if I look here, it's telling me it's Visual Basic, which is fine, that's what I want. It's telling me here, this is the Linux operating system, which is the operating system based on Unix. This is the Mac OS system. This is the Windows system, and it's telling me it's a console. So I could build an application by selecting this that will ultimately allow my program to run on these operating systems. I am interested in writing a console application using the Visual Basic language 
but within Windows. So if you look here, you can see it's telling me you're going to be using Visual Basic. You're going to be in Windows, in my case, Windows 11, and it's going to be a console application. So I'm going to select this and then I'm going to click next. And then it comes to this and it's asking me to configure your new project. And it's chosen a project name here of console app one. Here it's storing my files at this location. Now I'm going to leave it at that default location. And here it's telling me that the solution name is console app one. And I'm just going to leave this at its default. Now this is something that you would normally when you're writing an application choose a sensible name for this here instead of console app one if it was an application for finding the statistics for the data returned from the amount of temperatures that exist in a greenhouse over a given time you would choose here greenhouse temperatures or something appropriate but because we're at the beginning of the playlist i'm just going to go with what I'm given here and you come now to this where you click create and wait and what will happen it'll configure the new project and then we're within the Visual Studio IDE. When you first start using Visual Studio what you're seeing in front of you can actually become a little overbearing there is so much to learn in terms of all of the component parts of the IDE. Now my recommendation is not to worry too much about all of these component parts. Let's just consider the important bit in order for us to get a console application to work. But just very briefly, here we've got the menu that will drop down and give us things we can call upon. Here we've got the tool bar and that's for things that would typically need to be used more frequently. Over here we have the Solution Explorer, which is important. This is something that keeps a check on all of the files and keeps them under your control as to what you would want to be part of your project. And that's a video in its own right. And I'll come back to that later. But here, where this says module1.vb, and what we can see below is the window that I am interested in as the user of the IDE the first time I come across it. And you can see this line, it says module, module one, and here it says end module. And in this area, you can see I've got a subroutine. Now, this has got the name main. Now that name is important because when you come to run a console application, it knows to look at this subroutine first. And it's the main one. And as a programmer, you put your code that you want to execute first here in between submain and end sub. When you've done that, you come up here and you click start and you see what happens. You see what your program looks like when it is running. Now, if you consider this window, which is module one, you can see in submain, I have just typed in these two lines of code. Now, I'm not going to discuss what these lines of code actually mean in any detail. Needless to say, if you look at the first line, it's got here, hello world. And I suspect you realize that when I run this, it's going to put hello world out onto the console. And this here is needed so the console doesn't disappear from view. But I'm going to come back and look at the Hello World program in its own right later in the playlist. Let's just quickly look what will happen when I run this program. So I come here to the start, click on that and wait. And you can see here it says Hello World. And you'll note the cursor is flashing here because it's waiting for me to enter something to make the console disappear. Now I'm going to do that by hitting the enter key on the keyboard it'll read that as a line and then the program ends as you can see so this video has shown you how to create a console application within visual studio choosing the visual basic language and these two lines of code are the two lines of visual basic that i've typed in to enable the program to display hello world on the console 
please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.